Hi, welcome to Estate Planning Blueprint. I'm Andrew Sykes, and today we're going to be talking about retirement accounts in estate planning, and particularly the problems that you might have with traditional retirement accounts as opposed to Roth retirement accounts. So the difference there is that with a traditional IRA or 401k or 403b, there's been no tax withheld and the amounts have just accumulated and grown tax-free for the employee for years. But as a result, then when you take the money out and you take a distribution eventually, the money comes out and it's ordinary income. Whereas with a Roth, the money is, the tax is paid up front so that when you take a distribution out, it's taken out tax-free. And also you don't have the same requirement for required minimum distributions. With a traditional one at age 72 these days, um, it's uh, required that you take out a certain amount according to your life expectancy every year. So those are the differences with a traditional and a Roth. And the reason it makes a difference in estate planning is that because you have the amount coming out for taxes, uh, it's coming out not only for the individual whose retirement it is, but also for any beneficiaries. So during your lifetime, you're gonna deal with the issue of taxes. And then if you're leaving it to your beneficiaries, the beneficiaries are gonna be taking out tax, which could be pretty significant, especially if they happen to be in their prime earning years at the time that they inherit it. Uh, they could be uh, taxed perhaps at the highest rate. So a substantial amount of this asset is going to be subject to income tax. Another reason why it's important these days is that back in 2019, Congress passed the SECURE Act, and the SECURE Act changed the way people inherit um, IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, all of those qualified retirement accounts. So before the act, um, beneficiaries were allowed to take it out on a very favorable time frame. They could take it out according to a very favorable life expectancy table. And as a result, just take out a small required minimum distribution each year and leave most of it growing tax-free. Uh, so as a result, if it was a fairly substantial retirement account that they were inheriting, they could grow for a long time tax deferred while they're just taking out a little bit each year. So that was very favorable. But that changed under the SECURE Act. So now for most um, people who are in, uh, inheriting retirement accounts, they're going to have to take it out over 10 years. Not everybody. There are some exceptions. But for, for a lot of people who inherit retirement accounts, it's that 10-year time frame. So you don't get the stretch anymore. You have that accelerated 10-year time period uh, within which to take out the all of the uh, funds so you get this big tax issue. So that's, that's why retirement accounts are different from other accounts that people might have when we're doing their estate planning, like their brokerage accounts, their, their savings and checking, all those kinds of things where there are already um, assets that taxes have been paid on. So this offers a challenge, but it's also an opportunity to provide some great creative solutions to people to address this issue about income tax and distributions um, on an accelerated time frame. So um, what are some alternatives that we can think about? So one is to always consider a Roth conversion for people. Um, and what that means is that with a Roth conversion, if you have a traditional retirement account, you convert it to a Roth account that we talked about before. And if you do that, let's say you did that this year with a $1 million IRA. So I want to convert that to a Roth IRA. What that would mean is I'd have to pay the tax on it this year. So if I have money from some other account, could pay three or four hundred thousand dollars to convert a one million dollar IRA in a single year, then uh, you know that's that's the um, that's the strategy of converting it is that you're paying the tax now. And the idea is that once I've done that, once I paid this tax this year. Now, when I take out distributions later, and particularly when my beneficiaries take out their distributions later on, nobody's paying income tax on that. Also, I don't have the same requirement for required minimum distributions, so it's not being reduced every year once, once I get to age 72. 
So as a result, if I live long enough um, and don't need that account, the idea is it can grow tax deferred the way uh, retirement accounts do, but not be diminished by the required minimum distributions. And if we pay the taxes now, eventually as it grows, the idea is in the long run, maybe it's gonna mean more money for the beneficiaries. Now I qualified that a bit, I said maybe, so the thing I want to emphasize with Roth conversions is that you always want to get a qualified financial advisor um, to determine whether or not it's a good idea in this particular situation. So if you have a client that you think might benefit from Roth conversion, always get somebody that can run those projections, run the scenarios, and make some reasonable assumptions mm -hmm. about market growth and so on in the future and see if it really makes sense for that client. But for, so it's not for everybody, but for those clients that it is good for, it can be a real tax saver. So that's one thing to consider. As an estate planning attorney, I don't do Roth conversions myself, but you know, partner with somebody who is qualified to do the financial part of it, and then you can really perhaps benefit your client. It's a big value add for them that there's that tax savings, and it's something that you definitely want to spot the issue on. Uh, another alternative to just leaving things the way they are and let, letting people uh, have these tax consequences is to consider converting it to life insurance. You might be familiar with a, a financial advisor by the name of Ed Slot. He's uh, had a, a, a show on PBS for a number of years and uh, he's written a book called The Retirement Savings Time Bomb and, and How to Defuse It. And he writes a whole chapter on converting IRAs and 401ks to life insurance. And this can be a big tax saver too, because life insurance passes income tax free. So let's take an example. Let's say someone has a $1 million IRA and they're age 60 and in pretty good health. And it turns out that because they have other income that they expect to have during their retirement, they're not really going to use that IRA for uh, their day-to-day -day expenses and they're not going to need the income from it to live on. They just want to have it go to their beneficiaries in the most tax advantaged way that they can. So the idea would be to get an insurance quote and, you know, maybe with life insurance at age 60, you might get a policy worth at least what it's worth now, a million dollar in the, in the IRA, and maybe even two or three million if the person's in good health. So you get the life insurance policy and you pay for it with um, after-tax distributions from the IRA. So in other words, you might get a fully paid up life insurance policy, let's say worth two million, would not be unreasonable for somebody at, at age 60. Um, and you would pay for that uh, by having them take out enough distributions to pay for the um, premiums each year and then at the end, you, you've exhausted the IRA, but you have a fully paid up life insurance policy. And now, unlike the IRA, which would have all these tax consequences, the $2 million life insurance policy is going to pass tax-free. So you've solved that income tax problem for the client. And you might have also solved other problems too. So for example, here in Pennsylvania, people are subject to the uh, Pennsylvania inheritance tax. And if that client with a $1 million IRA uh, died after, let's say they died at age 80, when they're already subject to minimum distributions, uh, that would be taxable. They would um, pay inheritance tax, 4.5% for children, 12% um, if it was going to siblings, 15% for nieces and nephews, that sort of thing. So if you're in a state like that, and life insurance is not taxable like it is in Pennsylvania. We pay no life, we pay no inheritance tax on life insurance. Uh, solved another problem, not only save the in income tax, save the inheritance tax as well. Another thing that you can um, look for, does the client have a federally taxable estate? So if they are subject to federal tax, federal estate tax, then uh, you can think of taking the life insurance policy and putting it into an irrevocable life insurance trust. And uh, after a few years, that will uh, not be subject to federal estate tax. So now you've saved another 
set of taxes for your client. You've taken care of the income tax and maybe saved them from federal estate tax too. So um, converting to life insurance can be a very effective um, method of addressing this income tax issue in retirement accounts. Another approach to consider is the charitable remainder trust. So these are sort of making a comeback after the SECURE Act because people are trying to find alternatives to that 10-year time limit on making distributions. And a charitable remainder trust is a way to do that. So let's take another example. Let's take the $1 million IRA and we'll assume that we have a client that's charitably inclined and doesn't need this money um, maybe to live on and they're, they're going to assume that when they die they have a one million dollar um, ira that they would leave to a charitable remainder trust and we'll also assume that this client has one daughter uh, who is the sole heir so they would set it up for example to pay out over 20 years all right so now instead of paying out over 10 years paying out over 20 years so we'll say we're going to leave it to a charitable remainder trust and it pays the daughter 5% of the value of that IRA per year for the next 20 years. Uh, we'll also make another assumption. We'll assume 7% average growth on the IRA. So if that's the case, then there will definitely be enough to pay for the 5% a year and still have something left over at the end. We'll have at least the $1 million we started with uh, to leave to a charity. So it's kind of like you're leaving it twice. You're leaving the $1 million plus, right? Because they're getting 5% a year. And then if it's growing at 7%, that the principal will increase. So the 5% a year will increase over time as the uh, retirement account continues to grow in the trust. So the daughter will have gotten at least a million dollars. And then the charity will have gotten a million dollars as well. So for people that have a favorite cause that they're passionate about, that can be a great way um, you know, to, to accomplish a couple things. They're, they're still benefiting one of their loved ones, but they're also benefiting this cause that they care about. So those are a few different right, you know, uh, alternatives in estate planning. If you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, also like and subscribe. That helps us to reach more people. And if you hit the bell for notifications, then the next time we have a live stream, uh, you'll be notified of that as well. So thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video.